So I wasn't here this afternoon or this morning, so I don't know. Uh, yesterday, a lot of the uh, presentations were from customers explaining how they used PBS. And this afternoon, I'm going to explain, hopefully, how you can use PBS better. So what I'm going to talk about is the uh, PBS job sorting formula. Um, can I ask how many of you actually use the formula in your scheduling policies? OK, a few of you. All right. Um, so maybe this is new for some. This was introduced in PBS 9.2, so it's been around for a while. Um, it's a mechanism for an admin can use to gain more fine-grained control over how their jobs are sorted versus job sort key or anything else they might do. Um, you can use all different kinds of, you uh, re can use resource requests, uh, the, the, the resources requested by the job. You can use uh, waiting time, eligible time, if you're familiar with that. Um, any other uh, admin defined at, uh, variables. You can use fair share percentage, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, it, it helps eliminate um, a user's ability to gain the system because you have specific control over what is being used to sort the jobs. You can handle exceptions. Uh, an admin can say, you know, I want to run this job next. You can instantly bump the priority way up so the next scheduling cycle will be one of the first ones to be considered for execution. Um, and you can combine it with some PBS hooks to do some interesting things. Um, let's see, it, it is applied to every job at the beginning of the scheduling cycle. Uh, it will override uh, job sort key and fair share. So if you're using one of those two policies, you may want to uh, be careful. And, and then uh, it can be made up of, yes? It doesn't override fair share. It doesn't anymore? OK. Thank you, bro. Um, does it have a priority? I mean, is it is fair share applied after the formula's priority is calculated, or does it? Fair share overrides. Sorry? No. OK. So fair share overrides the formula, then? Yeah. OK. Sorry? Nothing. <laughs> All right. And anyway, uh, what you can use in a formula, you can use um, resources requested by the job, set by uh, defaults on queues or servers, um, job attributes, constants, and then the different types of uh, mathematical um, exponents, parentheses, plus, minus, multiplied, added, subtracted, divided. Um, here's an example of one thing that you need to be careful of. In the formula, if you use NCPUs, it's an integer. If you access memory, it'll be expressed in k bytes. And wall time is in seconds. So when you're coming up with a formula, you want to be careful not to use, say, just wall time, because it may be a huge number in seconds, versus the number of NCPUs you requested by your job. Or if you have gigabytes of memory, that'll probably overwhelm any value of NCPUs that you might have. So you want to be sure to kind of normalize things when you're putting your formula together. Um, the job attributes, eligible time, job priority, queue priority. This is the job priority as requested by the user or set by a default on a queue or something. So um, you want to probably be careful about using that too frequently in your formula. Um, custom, -wide, uh, custom resources, that's where the admin settable priority comes in. We'll talk about that. I have an example of that. And then constants either integer or floating. Um, when you go to set up your formula, you have to be um, admin or root on Unix. Um, Any time that PBS introduces the ability to introduce a scripting-like language into the server or the mom or the scheduler, we want to make sure that uh, it is root or uh, doing it, because the server, the daemons run as root. Uh, there are a couple of special flags that you can use um, for resources that you're going to be using in your formula. You can make a resource invisible to a normal user. Um, obviously, if it's invisible, it's, it's, um, they can't read it, they can't write it, they can't request it. You can also create it read-only so that they can see it, but again, they can't modify it, request it. 
um, operator manager privilege can do any of these things to these resources. Uh, you can um, set the value of a custom resource as uh, if, if you don't have one of the special flags on it, a user can request it. You can set it as a default. Um, you can set something in a hook. Or you can directly modify the value of the uh, resource with QAlter. The um, evaluation of the hook, I'm sorry, of the formula can be seen in the log file. If you have the debug three um, enabled or exposed in a scheduler logging filter, you'll see in a message like that. If you are working on a new formula and you want to try and debug it, unfortunately, the debug error message is at a different log level. So this goes back to one of the things we were talking about earlier over in uh, Chris's discussion about changing log, logging to make it easier. But if you have debug two opened up, you'll see this kind of an error uh, when you're trying to debug your formula. And also a note, um, if you know, people have done some very clever things with the formula, but one thing you need to be aware of is that the formula is actually evaluated before the server nine res script. So if you're thinking about setting something in a server nine res script that you're hoping to use in your formula, that's not gonna work. Uh, if you set it in a server nine res, it'll get used by the formula in the next scheduling cycle. All right, here's some examples of actually using the formula. Um, I created an invisible resource called Prio. Um, I set it as a server default to one and basically set that to be the formula so that if an admin decides that he wants to bump up the priority of a job, he can just change the value of that um, resource on the job with QAlter and that job will instantly get bumped up in priority the next scheduling cycle, it'll, it'll get evaluated first for execution. Adding on to that a little bit, there is a server attribute called eligible time enabled that will accumulate as a job sits waiting for resources. And um, this is how you would basically replace starving. Over time, the eligible value of a job will increase. The longer it sits, the larger it gets, and the higher the priority of the job gets. You can see here I've normalized it so that you have hours as opposed to seconds for eligible time. And I included the admin priority so that if an admin still wants to be able to increase the priority of a job, they can still just set that prio and uh, the job will be considered next. Adding it a little more uh, onto the, uh, the formula example, here we've made it so that large jobs get a little bump um, in priority by adding the number of NCPUs and gigabytes of memory, which will obviously be bigger values for a larger job, to the eligible time. Notice eligible time this time is in seconds, so this isn't a huge bump, but at least you know, it, it will try to bring them to the top of the queue for any jobs that were submitted around the same time. And, um, They'll try to run first. Small jobs will still accrue eligible time and, and, and increase in priority as well. A more elegant way of uh, bumping the um, priority of large jobs over small jobs. Here you can see uh, we're using wall time instead of memory, but I've normalized it to hours. And I've also included um, a waiting factor so that different queues can have different emphasis for different types of jobs. Um, you could have a queue that has, you know, sets walls, uh, W size to a huge value. And in that queue, large jobs would be emphasized um, over jobs with just, you know, large eligible times and vice versa for the wait time. Um, this is an extreme example of a formula that our own Chris Sauerwald here wrote for a customer. <laughs> it uses 
different um, custom resources and things, so I, I can't really go into much detail about what it actually ends up doing, other than, pardon? The key is implementing starving jobs before inside the form. Right. That's what this does, and it also takes into account whether the job is over a soft limit um, through some other magic Chris has done. But as you can see, they can get pretty complicated. You can do some pretty wild things. You have some pretty, uh, again, the very fine-grained control over what you want to do. Um, if you're more interested in any of these topics, uh, the, the job sorting formula is described in the admin guide. The eligible time job attribute is also in the admin guide on uh, that section. And the resource permission flags um, have been documented in the admin guide as well. I know it went pretty quickly. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. <laughs> so was there a reason that the uh, formula wasn't made a potential job sort key so that you could have kind of the best of both worlds? So that it doesn't over, I'm, I'm sorry, could you? So it, was there a reason that the formula wasn't made just one of the job sort key selections you could use? I mean, if you wanted the current behavior, you would, you'd have that as the only job sort key, but if right. you wanted to have a more complicated behavior, you would allow other sort keys to maybe be before or after the formula key. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to think of something that would be available in the job sort key that you couldn't just insert into a formula. Fair share. Fair share is the primary key. For job. If you have fair share turned on, right. any job sort keys get applied after fair share. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As Steve pointed out, fair share is the primary sort key. It happens before the formula is evaluated. So if you had fair share turned on, you could use the formula as a secondary sort key. Right. Right. Oh, that would be why. Yes. Okay. All right. And and there are other reasons too. Uh, if, if you're trying to take all of your job sort keys and put them in the formula, the formula gets kind of unwieldy. Mm -hmm. but, but if you just want to have kind of another like custom attribute that you add that you want to make maybe the second uh, importance in, in job sorting, it's easier, it would be easier to do that if it were a selectable one of the sort keys. I was just curious why it wasn't just made something that you could use as a sort key. Yeah, that's, I mean, uh, it was I, probably in, go ahead, Bill. I was going to say, there's a really good reason. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, this is, like I said, this was before my time, actually, and, and I'm, I'm thinking it was just considered to be a replacement for the node sort key, or job sort key. Um, I don't know if the thought of making it a secondary node sort or anything occurred to us. Other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs>